be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Dennis Gebhardt here from Guru Nation, welcoming you to our first episode of Rabbit Trails with my special guest today, Max Masano from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, let me tell you a little bit about this program and what you can expect. We're going to be doing this program periodically, and the main focus of it is to kind of chase down some of those urban legends or those rabbit trails or even rabbit holes that we go down when we're conversing with other colleagues. You know, sometimes we get caught up in this information that can be very, very confusing. You know, one of the things I've always believed is that, you know, education is so very, very important for us as salon professionals, and it's about understanding what we're doing so we can actually achieve mastery in hair color. So the goal of this program is to take on some of those stories and give you the real stuff, the real scoop, the real truth about what is and what isn't. And so uh, look, if I'm going to hurt, if I hurt your feelings and some of this information, I'm sorry in advance, but most importantly, it's about empowering you as a salon professional so you can achieve greatness and you can discover your own personal genius. So today I'm very excited to have with me Max Masano. Max is a uh, salon owner. He actually, uh, he travels between Boston and Florida doing hair. He has clients in both states. Max has been an educator for L'Oreal, for Aveda. Uh, Max, who, who's the third one? L'Oreal, Aveda. Matrix. 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 Yeah, so I'm really glad to have him here. And uh, Max, welcome to the program. Thank you for helping me kick off this series. I'm very excited about what we're going to be sharing with folks. And uh, would you just take a couple of minutes and just tell them a little bit about yourself, uh, give them a little bit of idea about your experience and uh, some of your journeys in the salon industry. Would you do that for me? Sure, I'd love to. And uh, also thank you for having me today. Um, Again, my name is Max. I have been a hairdresser for almost 25 years now. Uh, the bulk of my career, I've also been an educator. I've worked in the salon the entire time, but I've also been very fortunate that during my career, I got to work with um, some bigger manufacturers such as L'Oreal Professional, Aveda, and Matrix, not only as an artist, but and at certain times in a full-time kind of capacity. So I, I've been sort of exposed to the whole gamut uh, of our industry from the, the sales side, the marketing side, uh, you know, and also like the, the science and chemistry side as well. Um, and then I've been a salon owner. I have been an independent educator. I've kind of done it all. And um, yeah, it, I was really uh, when in search of my own sort of personal mentorship uh, to kind of take my career to the next level. And that's how I met you, Dennis, because, yeah. you know, I definitely was a, uh, how would you say it? Like, a, I kind of, you know, working for a manufacturer, I kind of believed all the, the marketing fluff and hype right. and I, I sort of bled it and you know, every now and again, certain things wouldn't add up, but I was just like, I chalked it up to, uh, you know, that was just, you know, something I didn't understand yet. Right. And then it wasn't really until I uh, kind of happened upon a couple of your videos that I had purchased online. And, you know, one of them, uh, which I think you still have what's in it. Yeah. You, know, you really break down you know, ingredient decks. And I was kind of like, oh, wow. You know, so it's sort of, it, it, you almost sort of started stripping the marketing piece out of me. And it, it really allowed me to kind of evolve in my career and, you know, sort of break down the truth versus tales. Yes. You know, well, so. That is great. And I am certainly glad that, uh, You've decided to join me today, and I'm glad that that information empowered you like other people have been empowered with that information. You know, I, you know, I didn't, I was not born with that information. I learned it as well, just like everyone else. 
you know, when I graduated from beauty school, I thought I knew new hair color until I had my first hair color nightmare in the salon. And we've all had that, some of us, and me, me as well. Sometimes I went back and I messed the head of hair up again. Uh, but I finally realized that, you know, what I thought I knew was really not very much at all. And I am so grateful to my mentor, who uh, was a guy named Sam Lappin, who, um, if you don't know who he is, it's like somebody not teaching you who George Washington was, because he was really, truly the father of hair color in, in North America, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I was very fortunate to work with him and with other people. The chemist I worked with when I worked for a major manufacturer for over 26 years, they were wonderful to work with. They taught me so much about chemistry. And um, on top of the fact that I had gone to school to uh, get my degree in chemistry, but they taught me so much about it. And there were so many urban legends that I believed that really weren't true at all. And so my goal was to set out to hopefully tell the truth. And um, <clears throat> the great thing about the truth is that once you see it, <laughs> and it's like we say, don't believe me, test what I say. And, and right. once you see the truth, then you own that truth. And I think for many of us in this industry, those are some of the missing pieces that we didn't get when we were in school. Or for some of us, we didn't get even after being in the salon industry for 10 or 15 years. So um, I'm really grateful today that uh, people are hungry for this information and it's fun. And uh, you yeah. know, it's like, like me, I know you're a geek head too. And uh, I wear that badge pr proudly because you know, yes. understanding it gives you that mastery and it really gives you almost, you feel, uh, you feel, uh, almost bulletproof you know you say look send me the bad hair i love bad hair because okay. once i make that transition it's going to be great and more than likely send me all your bad clients that you can't work with send them all to me because i promise you they're not going to come back to you if they come to me because i will fix the head for them so um that's great so listen, today we're going to try to cover uh, several subjects in a short amount of time. And, you know, you and I've had this conversation about what we want to discuss today. And of course, as usual in our industry, uh, I guess in the last, what, 10 years, there's been a great surge of new products. You know, there's always the next new product. I, I love that in this business. They're always looking for the next new thing. And of course, uh, you brought up the subject of uh, something that virtually every hairdresser that I know of today believes they have to have in every color product that they use. And they can't believe they can't do hair color without it. And um, that's what? What is that, Max, that people want to Oh, the, the famous bond builders or bond multipliers, you know, they come by many different names, but now they are kind of a dime a dozen. They are, yes. Yeah. And, and here's the funny thing is that bond building is not new. <laughs> We've been doing it for years. I mean, the originators of building bonds in the hair and really bringing it to the salon industry was a company called Redken. Yeah. We started off with a product called PPT, which, uh, oh my God, uh, <laughs> it was the worst smelling stuff I'd ever smelled it, in my life. It was awful. Right. But it was basically a glue. Yeah. That's what it was. And the whole idea was it, it's what, when hair is in a, a poor condition or when the integrity has been compromised, usually you have a structure issue. Hair that has poor integrity doesn't always need moisture. I, I find hairdressers always want to prescribe moisture, right, to the hair. It doesn't feel good. Let's, make, let's moisturize it. Uh, mostly if hair is compromised, it's, it's an integrity issue and it's a structure issue. And the great thing about that product is it coated the hair, that's basically what it did, uh, kind of glued the frayed hair back together uh, until the hair could grow out, until we could cut it off. And uh, that was a way, a form of building bonds. Um, today, most bond builders put ionic bonds I invite you to Google what an ionic bond is. They put ionic bonds in the hair. Now, ionic bonds are temporary, but they're very strong. 
<coughs> so when you use a treatment in your color product that puts ionic bonds in the hair, the hair feels stronger. It feels really good, but it's temporary because most of them only last about seven shampoos. Right. So that's why most of you have to use support products to maintain them. That, that should be kind of a clue that it's not long lasting. You haven't cured the hair forever. Um, what you've done is you've just temporarily, you know, strengthened the hair, which is a good thing to do. Um, but other than that, you know, that hair still, if you don't maintain putting those ionic bonds back in the hair, what eventually will happen is you'll see what you really did to the hair. Um, right. That's why I always say, if you wouldn't do it without a bond builder, don't do it with a bond builder, <laughs> right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, once a steak is well done, it's never going to be medium rare again. It will so, not. <laughs> so, and I really feel like people think that they're going to restore the hair to like this virgin state with it. And, you know, they're... They are great as a support product, but you know, it's like, like you said, you know, if, if it's something that you wouldn't do without it, you probably shouldn't be doing it to the hair to begin with. You're, you're absolutely right. And I think that that is, that's really the proper thought process because here's, here's what's interesting. Now you've been in the industry a long time, just like I have. Um, We've done we've done bleaches on hair without using any kind of a bomb builder in the bleach. It's the way we were trained originally. There was nothing you could put in the bleach because in order for a bleach to work successfully, uh, you don't want anything that's going to hamper its ability to decompose the structure of the hair. So people were doing bleaching on hair be long before the bomb builders were created. Now suddenly they don't believe they can actually bleach hair without a bond builder put into it. And right. what's really funny is sometimes there's a lot of mark, there's more marketing story about the bond builder there is, than there is actual fact. Would you agree, Max? Oh, 100%. And I think that really the, the kind of the, the basics that we need to get back down to is actual like hair structure Right. What hair made of, you know, it's protein and moisture and you can have too much of one or not enough of one because it's all about bringing the balance back to the hair. That's right. You know? yeah. And and if you really know what your what color is or lightener is doing to the hair during the chemical process, you also know of different ways you can sort of you know, help to mitigate some damage. Right. You know, as opposed to this like thing being marketed as like the cure-all for everything. Right. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a little side story. I saw uh, someone who was very famous in our industry mm -hmm. who worked for one of the very famous uh, bond builder companies Yes. And I was at a hair show working and we all had the where same. Do I, where do I see you tiptoeing. Are you tiptoeing? That's good. Yeah. Good idea. I, I was, you know, we were in the back rinsing models because we all had just one place. And, you know, this person's model's hair was literally coming off in clumps from a bleach wow. out. Wow. And the, uh, you know, they had the big bottle of the bond builder and they're dumping it on there. And I was like, dude, that's not going to help you now. You well, know, a little late. That ship has sailed, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that steak is more than well done. Exactly. So. Exactly. Well, I, I totally agree with you. I think that I, I think anything you do to protect the hair is a great thing, but you kind of have to realize what's actually happening to the hair and for me i've always been kind of against adding things into my chemical while it's working because here's what i learned i learned that a chemical a treatment or a chemical in its natural form by itself has a specific effect on the hair 
when I take that and I mix it with something else, I change the effect, maybe slightly, maybe a lot. So for me, if I'm going to treat the hair because I'm concerned about its integrity, why wouldn't I do that before and then after I yeah. do the chemical service? Because then I could actually see how effective the product is. Exactly. That happened in our business because we're always in a hurry. And so they tried to show us how a little bit of this and a little bit of that, <clears throat> and you can get a benefit from both. Well, you can, but are you getting the full benefit? See, for right. me, I want that full benefit of, of the product and how it works. Yeah, but exactly. There's a lot of misunderstanding about bonds in the hair, don't you think? Oh, it's honestly, it's something that um, I really had to uh, research myself, you know, and, uh, you know, spent hours either in actual hair structure uh, textbooks, like that cosmetic chemists use, and looking at actual research papers on the on the internet to really, you know, learn like what happens when these disulfide bonds break, right? And what and and how the uh, cysteic acid that's produced actually attacks the hair fiber mm -hmm. and eats away at the protein structure. Certainly does. <laughs> you know, you know, you know that lady when you started out of beauty school that she would come in once a week for her shampoo set. And she had color in her hair too. And when your hair was wet, you could smell the color in her hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. She had so much cysteic acid in her hair fiber that it was just, it was terrible. And the hair was like, it had no structure at all. I mean, you yeah. could wrap it around a roller really easy. <laughs> but well, it don't was, forget, she, she had a perm too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's what's funny. I think that. I've seen more damage done to hair in the last 10 years than I saw in the 1980s. And believe yeah. me, in the 80s, we messed hair up. And I, I like and perm in the same day. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, with no problem at all. So I think understanding the importance of that, I, I think sometimes people don't understand how much of a structure damage there is to the hair and how, how much they have of chemical bonds that actually hold the hair together. They right. don't have that much. It only makes up one third of the hair structure, the disulfide bonds. They only make up one third. The other two thirds are made up of hydrogen bonds and salt bonds. Yeah. And those are broken every day when you shampoo your hair. Right. So if you don't have that many chemical bonds to hold your hair together in the first place, you need to be cautious when you're lightening hair. You know, yeah. Mr. Oy said to me, yellow is a sign of life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, and one of, the, um, one of the books I have, it even says, even the most perfectly applied lightening service is still going to break, it, you know, something like 10 or 15% of the disulfide bonds. So you wanna hold on to as many as you can so that your hair still feels like hair or the client's hair still feel, feels like hair. Right? And, and whenever I'm sort of like, you know, like in a class or something, someone balks against, you know, the science of it, I say to, I say to them, the next time you cut someone whose ends are heavily highlighted, save some of that hair, mix up your lightener with the bond builder, and you know, lay it on a foil and do it. You will still melt that hair. Oh, you yeah. leave it on for you know ninety minutes or whatever. Oh yeah, you know, Max. That's an important statement. What you just shared with them is the fact that even with a bond builder in your product, <laughs> you can still destroy the hair. Yeah. Okay. Bond builders do not prevent destruction of hair. No. All they do is they buffer the action that's all that they do and i think that's another subject when you talk about bomb builders about how a bomb builder buffers the action because you know there's lots of marketing stories out there 
Sure. One that we just heard just a couple of days ago was that this very famous bond builder, when you put it in the product because it has a low acid pH, it will bring the pH of the mixture down to a neutral pH. I think that's what was said in that video, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And so Max and I decided that we would test it to see. And so Max, what were your results using that? So, so the, the, the bond building solution itself was a lower pH. It, it clocked in at about 3.5. I, um, I mixed the lightener first and um, tested the pH of it, which it was definitely alkaline. Mm -hmm. um, I then added the bond builder to it mm -hmm. and then tested it again. And actually the, the pH was continuing to rise because you know, it was like a fresh mix. Right. So it didn't bring it, it didn't bring it down at all. Right, right. So I think because people don't have uh, pH devices, measuring devices or nitrazine paper or anything like that, we take people at their, at their word. And, and here's right. the, just common sense, right? Because you and I had this conversation. In order for a bleach to do its job, it has to stay alkaline. If I right. bring it closer to neutral on the pH scale, and we'll talk about the pH scale when we come back, um, if I take it closer to neutral on the pH scale, the bleach slows down. The bleach right. will not lighten the hair. That's the reason it's positioned at the pH that it is. And so some of those stories don't make sense if you think about them logically. And I think understanding the pH scale is something that a lot of people don't understand. They know it because they saw it and they see it, but they don't know exactly what it means. So sure. on a scale of one to 10, Max, what would you tell people about bomb builders? What would you say? What is your feeling about bomb builders? I would say, I mean, the first thing I would say is it's, it's nice to have, but it's not a need to have. Okay. You know? um, so like, I, I have one in the salon uh, because, you know, it was kind of gifted to me. Yes. But uh, I honestly, if, you know, like, like we said before, you know, if I am feeling like, something is going to be too much for the hair. Right. I just don't do it. Sure. You know? Absolutely. Um, using caution and using yeah. your professional judgment is something that I think we both recommend. It's that yeah. there's nothing wrong with using a bomb builder or any kind of a buffering product that you choose to use. If that's what you like to use, we're not trying to tell you what products to use. We're saying right. just use caution, uh, use your professional judgment and use common sense. Um, and one last thought about bond builders. You don't need a bond builder in a demi permitted hair color. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying to you. <laughs> permanent hair colors do not create that structural damage that a permanent color or that a bleaching product would create. So you don't need a bond builder in your demi permanent product just saying you yeah know what works no. best for you they're they're expensive too so don't they are know, don't yeah. waste it absolutely absolutely all right well listen uh hopefully i think we've covered some great information here on bomb builders i think we've touched on everything so uh we're going to take a short break we'll see you back here in a little bit we're going to talk about the ph chart so everybody have a great bake we'll see you in a little bit
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the third block of our show today. I uh, hope you are enjoying it. Uh, let's get into our third subject. So, Dennis, there is a lot of controversy on the subject of clear and also its uses for shine, its uses for diluting. And I just want to kind of do a little deep dive. Yeah, you know what, Max? That's one of my favorite um, one of my favorite things to talk about because, uh, again, it's one of those amazing stories, man. And and here's the funny thing is that there are true believers <laughs> about some of the things they say about how that product works. So, I think the first thing is to to think about what is clear. Um, in most hair color lines that have a clear, uh, it's really just the base of the color with no dye intermediates. That's all that it is. So if you have a permanent hair color line that has a clear, it means that it has no dye intermediates in it and it's alkaline. <laughs> Simple as that. If you have a demi permanent line um, that has a clear in it, it means it has no dye intermediates and it's slightly alkaline. <laughs> so, you know, that's what you're working with. So when the story comes around where they say it helps to close the cuticle <laughs> and bring down the pH of the hair, that's impossible. Because the pH of, its, of the clear itself is higher than the pH of water, which is higher than the pH of the hair, the optimum pH for hair. So that's, it doesn't make sense. And then you're putting it on a fiber. And here's what we know about shine. In order to get shine, you must have reflect. And in order to get reflect, you must have tone. So if I'm putting it on hair without putting any kind of pigment in it, um, I can imagine I'm seeing shine in the hair, but I'm really not seeing what I want to because shine actually comes from a compact cuticle. The more compact the cuticle is, the more shiny the hair will be. A fine example is like take blonde hair. We all have lightened hair to blonde. And then when you blow it dry, even after you blow it dry, there's not a lot of shine in the blonde hair. But if you ever take and put a darker shade or you put a toner in it, guess what? You get shine. Why? Because there's tone in the hair. So I think uh, I don't use clear to add shine to the hair. Uh, I, don't, I don't use any demi permanence to add, you know, to add a lot of shine to the hair. Cause to me, shine comes from a healthy compact cuticle. And a lot of times I get, a, I, I do away with the shine, especially on my blondes because of the way I blow dry the hair. Sure. You know, the people who grab the blow dryer and they just, they shake that blow dryer. For some reason, they think shaking the blow dryer is going to make the hair dry faster. That's so hilarious. And what you're doing is if you think about it, if the hair is already blonde, the hair is already swollen. We know that bleach swells the hair about 22 and a half percent. So you've got swollen hair. And now you take a blow dryer where the air comes out of that blow dryer, the average blow dryer, the hair travel, the air travels at about 35 miles an hour, if you were to measure it. If you put a concentrator on your blow dryer, it travels at about 72 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine taking blonde hair that's already swollen and doing this with a blow dryer? You might as well put them on a motorcycle and run them down the highway. Yeah. And so if that cuticle is not laying flat, you're not going to get any shine out of that hair at all. So there's a lot of ways you get the hair to shine without using clear on it. Um, using clear to dilute. I mean, really, that's the reason we created it. I mean, clear was created in 1986. And the reason is because we launched a color called Shades EQ that only had 16 colors. And in order to expand your, I'm sorry, there was one other brand of color that had a clear and that was called cellophanes. Okay, in order to extend your palette of colors, 
we added clear so you could dilute the colors and put them in different levels where you needed them. And so that's the reason clear was created. It was created to take a level three, for example, that I loved the color at level three, but I really like to see that color at a lighter level. It allowed us to do that. Now, when I say that, many people think that if you add clear to your color and it sets in the violet family, if I add clear to my three, I can actually take my three to a seven and it would be like a seven level violet, which it wouldn't because a seven level violet shade of color is gonna have a different ratio of dye intermediates. That's what the little puzzle pieces are. When you put them together, they make a color molecule. There's no color molecule in your bottle or in your tube. It's all chemicals. But once those intermediates, couplers, and modifiers connect, you create, or you're visually able to see a color molecule. So if I take a three and add clear to it, I can take it up to a seven, but it's gonna be a level three at a level seven saturation. I can take a level three and take it to a level 10, but it's gonna be a level three at a level 10 saturation, not a level 10 version of that family of colors. Hopefully that's not too confusing, but it's, it's something I think people need to understand. I mean, that is why, and, and we've used that same concept in hair color for years. I mean, years ago, when people like Jane Mansfield and Marilyn Monroe, um, and Marilyn was not a platinum blonde, Okay, she was a light blonde, but she wasn't platinum. Okay, Jan Man Jay Mansfield was a platinum blonde. And the way you made platinum blondes is you took a level 12 hair color. Okay, now level 12 had very small amount of pigment in it. All right, and you would add a small amount of level one to your level 12 to tone the hair. Level one was black. So what you did is you took the stronger pigments at the lower level and moved them up to the lighter shade so they completely flatten out any warmth and create that snow, snow bunny white hair. So we did that years ago. And so today we do the same thing. Um, for those of you that use Shade DQ, and I can only talk, speak to Shade DQ because I know that line inside out, is that for many of you who try to use 09V platinum ice to create platinum hair, it's been misbranded. It's not platinum. Platinum ice was never designed to make platinum hair. It was designed to make a very, very light pastel blonde because platinum ice has softer tones in it. If I really want to flatten out the hair, I take level three, 03V, not 09V, and I dilute it to where it's at a level nine, now I can create platinum. So clear is a great product to work with. It allows me to move my colors, I, I, you know, mixing colors together. I can move horizontally up and down or, or across the bar. If I'm mixing clear with them, I can move up and down. Um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a look at this slide. You'll see on this slide, <clears throat> that we have a 100% okay, straight color here, and it's the darkest swatch you're looking at. The swatch in the middle, that's our control swatch. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to see that dark swatch diluted with clear to actually make it a level nine or a level 10 toner. And you can see how much control it has over warmth. It's the way hair color companies build hair color. I don't need strong tones at levels eight, nine, and 10 because the hair is not contributing strong warmth at levels eight, nine, and 10. I do need stronger tones below those levels or in darker levels because that's where the strongest warmth is contributed by the hair. So it only makes sense that when I'm making a light shade of color, it has a softer, um, a softer tone in it. It's not going to control warmth as well. It's not designed to do that because we're not expecting a lot of warmth at that light shade. 
But if I have that client, let's say she has a lot of warmth in her hair. So I, I have her at a level nine, but her level nine is like lemon yellow. It's not like scrambled eggs yellow. They're both yellows, but they're two different yellows. If I'm trying to refine that lemon yellow, I'm going to need more refining quality or more pigment, a stronger tone to control it than I would for the scrambled egg yellow. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And that's why clear is a great product, but don't use it to shine the hair. Um, even if you just put a drop of yellow, you take your yellow concentrate, put a little drop of yellow in your clear, you're going to get a much shinier head of hair. You won't make the hair yellow. <laughs> You'll just get a shinier head of hair. Reflect gives you shine. If you have no reflect, you have no shine. If you have no tone, you have no reflect. How'd that, how'd that sound, Max? I think, I think that is perfect. Good. <laughs> now, if you want to learn more, <laughs> sign up for one of our classes. Uh, you know, you can find our website. It is www.gurunation.net. And we invite you to come to our website, check it out. We offer educational programs online. We have pre-recorded webinars. <clears throat> and God willing, if COVID goes away, we'll be able to do some live programs. But in any case, um, you can see the kind of sampling of education that we do as a company. Um, well, Max, it's been quite a morning for us here. We've covered three, I think, big, big subjects as far as, uh, as, far as hair color goes. <clears throat> if definite, time, definite rabbit trails, man. <clears throat> yeah. If this is the first time you're watching us, uh, I invite you to subscribe here on YouTube. You can subscribe down here below. Um, send us a note. Let us know. Uh, have you found the information beneficial? If you have, please share it with your friends. Uh, our goal as a company is to help empower you. As I said before, is to help you create success and discover your own personal genius. I am so thankful, Max, that you were part of this program today. Um, I had a great time visiting with you and uh, talking yeah. about all this stuff. And uh, I'd like to invite you to come back and uh, do it with me again if you'd like to. I'd, uh, Absolutely. I'd like to do it again. But, uh, and listen, follow Max on Instagram. Uh, it is at Maxim Hair. Is that right, Max? Yep. Max M Hair. Uh, M Hair. Yeah, just Max M Hair. Max M Hair on yeah. Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at Real Captain Color. And so uh, we are going to wish you all a wonderful day. Hopefully you found this beneficial. We'd love to see you either in one of our virtual classrooms, see you on Instagram or one of the social media platforms. Uh, in any case, it's been great fun. And so, as I always say, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out of here. Max, how about you? Me. Thank you, my friend. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon. Bye.